Just a few months ago, scientists announced the San Andreas Fault is due for another major earthquake, specifically in Southern California. Think about earthquakes. You're probably thinking about earthquakes along the San Andreas Fault because of the big famous ones in San Francisco and Los Angeles. As you gaze upon the screen, it's hard to believe that what you're seeing isn't just one place. What if I told you that this is the very spot where two massive tectonic plates meet? Yes, you heard that right. When you stand here with someone, both of you will technically be in the same area, but standing on two separate plates. This is the incredible San Andreas Fault Line, which stretches for over 800 miles across California. But don't let its mesmerizing beauty fool you. This fault line is the potential origin point of one of the greatest disasters in California's history. The San Andreas Fault is rightfully considered the biggest threat faced by Southern California today. But how could a mere fault line cause so much devastation? As you stand at this mesmerizing spot with the sun blazing down and the wind whistling through your hair, it's hard not to feel a sense of curiosity and apprehension. What if the ground beneath you suddenly ruptured and the earth shook with unimaginable force? What if the San Andreas Fault finally gave way, unleashing one of the most catastrophic earthquakes in history? The San Andreas Fault is not just a mere line on a map, it's a ticking time bomb that could bring untold destruction to California. To truly comprehend the danger it poses to unsuspecting Californians, we must first delve into its geography. The San Andreas Fault Line is formed by the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate lying adjacent to each other. These two massive plates constantly rub against each other, building up immense pressure that is eventually released in the form of earthquakes. In fact, scientists predict that a major earthquake along the San Andreas Fault is long overdue and could strike at any moment. So next time you stand on this spot, take a moment to appreciate the beauty of the landscape, but also the looming threat that lies beneath your feet. But what exactly is the San Andreas Fault Line? The San Andreas Fault Line is a continental transform fault that spans over 1,200 kilometers through the heart of California. This fault line marks the boundary between the North American and Pacific plates and is responsible for shaping the Californian terrain as we know it today. The fault's unique characteristics are divided into three segments, each with varying degrees of earthquake risk. What's even more fascinating is that these plates are slowly sliding past each other horizontally with a slip rate of 20 to 35 millimeters per year. This slow movement is described by experts as right lateral slip motion. Interestingly, the discovery of the San Andreas Fault Line dates back to 1895 when a UC Berkeley professor, Andrew Lawson, stumbled upon its northern zone. And while many believe the fault was named after San Andreas Lake, reports suggest that Lawson named it after the surrounding San Andreas Valley. With the fault line's rich history and unique characteristics, it's no wonder it's considered one of the greatest geological wonders of the world. In 1906, San Francisco was rocked by a powerful earthquake, which led Lawson to believe that the fault responsible for the quake stretched all the way to Southern California. Another geologist, Thomas Dibley, later determined that this fault could cause lateral movements over hundreds of miles. This fracture in the Earth's crust has been forming for millions of years and has been responsible for many devastating earthquakes. The San Andreas Fault is where the North American Plate and the Northern Pacific Plate meet, and it's the reason behind the three segments known as the Northern, Central and Southern segments. Geologists have also discovered that the movement of these plates is causing compressional forces that have forced San Andreas to jog westward. It's an incredible natural phenomenon that has captured the attention of scientists and the public alike. The San Andreas Fault is no stranger to Californians, in fact, a majority of the state's population resides close to this infamous fracture. In some towns, the very roads people drive on are built right on top of it. Even the Bay Area Rapid Transit System of San Francisco has a tunnel that cuts through the fault area. While the plates don't slip annually, the buildup of compressional forces over years can lead to massive earthquakes that strike with little warning. Scientists are constantly worried about the potential dangers posed by this fault line, especially as most of it is now covered by development, putting countless lives at risk. But if you want to witness the power of the San Andreas Fault with your own eyes, head up north on Interstate 5 until you reach the Tejon Pass. Here you'll find a visible reminder of the tectonic forces at work. 
one plate scraping against the other, leaving behind a trail of grey quartz monzonite and brown sediment sandstone and siltstone. These rocks could never have formed together naturally, only the sliding movement of the plates made it possible. And between these two layers lies the true heart of the fault, a layer of black rock known as fault gouge. It's a humbling sight, a reminder of the incredible forces that shape our world and the dangers they pose. The San Andreas Fault is a ticking time bomb and the consequences of its next eruption could be catastrophic. In fact, if a major earthquake were to strike the area, it could very well sever Interstate 5, the main transportation route to and from Los Angeles, leaving thousands stranded. As you continue north into the Central California Valley and venture west, you'll reach the Carrizo Plain, a rural area thankfully spared from development over the fault line. But the Elkhorn Scarp is the place to be if you want to witness the true power of this geological marvel. From high above, you can clearly see the dramatic dip between the two plates. It's not just the land that bears the marks of this fault. The local waterways are also subject to shifting forces. Creeks that cross the fault line often find their courses altered over time as the plates continue to move and grind against each other. Seismologists warn that the southern portion of the San Andreas Fault is long overdue for a major release of stress. It's been over 160 years since the last one in 1857, and the longer it goes without release, the greater potential for a large-scale and devastating earthquake. It's not a matter of if, but when the next one will strike. Are we on the brink of a devastating earthquake? That's what seismologist Thomas Jordan warned a few years ago. According to him, the southern portion of the San Andreas Fault is locked, loaded and ready to go, meaning it could generate a massive quake at any moment. The cause? The Pacific Plate is moving faster than the North American Plate, putting tremendous stress on the fault line. While the northern portion has already experienced catastrophic quakes in the past, the south has remained relatively calm, leading experts to believe that a major event is inevitable. The US Geological Survey estimates that such earthquakes occur every couple of centuries, but the timing is unpredictable. What we do know is that when it happens, the destruction will be immense, and scientists have made a spine-chilling revelation about the middle section of the San Andreas Fault. It is at a higher risk of experiencing larger earthquakes than previously thought. While the fault moves imperceptibly in some areas, thereby avoiding earthquakes, Researchers have discovered that the middle section may have experienced high magnitude quakes in the past. According to Genevieve Coffey, an earthquake geologist, large quakes may have happened within the last 3 million years. Even if it doesn't trigger a massive quake, the section could act as a conduit for earthquakes originating from the northern and southern sections of the fault. Seismologists have been releasing forecasts every few years to keep the public informed and prepared for the big one. Shockingly, the estimated effects of a hypothetical 7.8 magnitude earthquake in California are catastrophic, as predicted by various models and environmental scientists. Imagine a massive earthquake hitting the Coachella Valley in California. What would the consequences be? To get a better idea, let's take a look at a groundbreaking earthquake simulation created by the California Academy of Sciences. While the San Andreas Fault is often considered the most significant source of seismic activity in the region, there are numerous other fault lines running through California that could be just as dangerous. One of these is the Haywood Fault, which runs parallel to the San Andreas Fault and is responsible for much of the movement between the tectonic plates. In the simulation, you can see what might happen if just 50 miles of any fault line ruptured. The resulting quake would be about 1 16th as intense as the devastating 1906 earthquake that hit San Francisco. The severity of the ground movement would depend on factors like the proximity of mountains and the type of soil. By factoring in these variables, scientists can estimate the intensity of the shaking that would occur. Now get ready to hold onto your seats as we explore the potential aftermath of an earthquake that's been dubbed the big one. Experts warn that California is at a high risk of experiencing a massive earthquake within the next 30 years, with a likelihood of magnitude 6.7 or greater hitting the state at a whopping 99%. The Cascadia fault line, which recently caused a 9.2 magnitude earthquake, is a reminder of the devastating power such natural disasters can have. While the upcoming earthquake is expected to be limited to a magnitude of 8, the destruction it causes will be significant Buildings constructed on the fault line will be hit the hardest, but
but thanks to the alquist priolo Earthquake Fault Zoning Act, the impact will be minimised as only a few constructions are in the zone. Nevertheless, the quake will damage around 90 fibre optic cables, 966 roads, 39 gas pipes and 141 power lines. The cost of repairing damaged buildings alone is estimated to be around $35 billion, with older buildings expected to be hit the hardest. Picture this. A massive earthquake hits Southern California, causing severe damage and widespread devastation. But that's just the beginning. Experts warn that the ensuing fires could be even worse than the ground shaking, with hundreds of blazes igniting and emergency personnel struggling to keep up. The water, gas and electricity lines are severed, and the modern buildings, although still standing, are unusable. The aftershocks keep coming, causing more destruction and leaving people miserable. And to make matters worse, seasonal winds could fan the flames, causing even more damage and exacerbating the risk of wildfires. The end result could be catastrophic, an estimated $200 billion in damage, 50,000 injured and 2,000 dead. USGS seismologist Lucy Jones warns that it's not just about the immediate impact, the long-term effects could be devastating, with a collapsing economy and people abandoning the region altogether. Southern California may never be the same again. When the big one hits, Southern California will be hit hard, causing significant damage. However, Californians are no strangers to earthquakes, so maybe the consequences won't be as severe as predicted by Lucy Jones. But earthquakes can cause aftershocks that trigger tsunamis, which can lead to flooding. Even smaller bodies of water like pools can create powerful waves called seiche. The damage won't just affect buildings, but also bridges, train tracks and highways, making transportation difficult or even impossible. First responders will face delays and other obstacles, making it even more challenging to deal with the aftermath of the earthquake. The impact will be immense, and it's hard to fathom the extent of the damage until it happens. The 1857 Taejeon earthquake shook up nearly 350 kilometers of Southern and Central California. And although it's commonly referred to as the Fort Taejeon quake, its epicenter was actually located just south of Parkfield. This earthquake had a magnitude of 7.8 and sadly resulted in the loss of two lives. On the other hand, California wasn't as fortunate in 1906 when a 7.8 magnitude earthquake ruptured almost 340 kilometers in the northern region with its epicenter near San Francisco. The impact was catastrophic and the quake struck on April 18, 1906, causing high intensity tremors from Eureka to the Salinas Valley. Fires broke out shortly after the quake and it took several days to extinguish them. Regarded as one of the deadliest earthquakes in US history, it devastated over 80% of the city and claimed more than 3,000 lives, which is the greatest loss of life in a natural disaster in California's history. The state experienced property losses worth $400 million in 1906, equivalent to more than $9 billion today. San Francisco was struck by another earthquake on March 22, 1957, but this one was considerably less severe than the devastating 1906 quake. This one was measured at a magnitude of 5.7, and while it caused financial losses of about $1 million, only one person died in the quake. The epicenter of the 1957 earthquake was located on the San Andreas Fault, which lies in the ocean west of San Francisco. The Loma Prieta earthquake of 1989 ruptured about 40 kilometers near Santa Cruz, California, with a magnitude of almost 6.9. While it caused moderate damage to some vulnerable areas in the Bay Area, it claimed the lives of 63 people. The most recent earthquake in the region happened on September 24, 2004, when a 6.9 magnitude quake shook the Parkfield area. The aftershocks of the main event continued for a week. The kind of movement occurring along the fault plays a major role in these earthquakes, with blocks on opposite sides of the fault moving horizontally in relation to each other. During the 1906 earthquake, roads, fences and rows of trees and bushes crossing the fault were offset by several yards and the roads crossing Tamales Bay were offset by almost 12 feet. The ground west of the fault moved relatively northward due to the sudden offset capable of initiating an earthquake occurring in one section of the fault at a time. The total offset unevenly accumulates over time, primarily by movement on one section followed by movement in another section of the fault. 
the San Andreas Fault's massive earthquakes happen when the locked and silent sections accumulate strain for over 100 years. The built-up strain is then released in great jolts, causing massive earthquakes. However, some sections of the fault experience creeping movement instead of producing sudden earthquakes. Over the past 20 million years, the total displacement accumulated from this movement and earthquakes is estimated to be around 350 miles. Experts have studied segments of the fault between the Tejon and Salton Sea in detail and found geologically similar terrains on opposite sides of the fault which are now separated by 150 miles. The movement of some crustal blocks may have been through 20 or more degrees of latitude. There are many such segments called seismic gaps along Earth's plate boundaries, including the San Andreas, where no large earthquakes have occurred in a long time. Scientists have achieved some success in predicting when some of these gaps will produce earthquakes. According to geological studies, earthquakes have occurred every 150 years on the southern part of the San Andreas Fault in the past 1500 years. The last major earthquake occurred in 1857, which means the next one is likely to occur within the next 30 years. The San Francisco Bay Area faces a lower risk of a massive earthquake since less than 150 years have passed since the 1906 event. Nonetheless, the area can still experience moderate-sized earthquakes, which may pose a potential hazard at any time. Experts, however, believe that a large earthquake won't occur without warning. Before such an earthquake, there will be several years of heightened seismic activity, including multiple aftershocks of magnitude 5 or greater along the San Andreas Fault. Seismologists predict that significant changes in the Earth's surface will occur before a massive earthquake. These changes may include the shortening of survey lines across the fault, elevation changes and changes to the strain meters placed in various wells. The section of San Andreas near Parkfield in Central California is a crucial area for research on earthquake prediction methods. Moderate-sized earthquakes have been occurring in this area every 20 to 22 years for almost a century now. Parkfield has been susceptible to a magnitude 5 to 6 earthquake since the Great Earthquake of 1966 and one did occur in 2004. The Hayward Fault, which runs along the base of the Berkeley Hills and passes through the University of California, is also a significant risk. It crosses several dormitories and a theatre, as well as the steps of the California Memorial Stadium. Although scientists know that the fault moves slowly, they are aware that faults can rupture and cause sudden earthquakes without any warning. A professor named Richard Allen from Berkeley has warned that the Hayward Fault is particularly dangerous. The last time it caused an earthquake was in 1868, so it is considered overdue for a significant event. Allen has also predicted that an earthquake on this fault could cause the stadium field to liquefy. Experts have acknowledged that massive earthquakes are a fact of life in California, but there are ways to prepare for them. To defend against a hazardous earthquake, California is implementing three major strategies. Buildings in earthquake-prone areas should be designed and constructed to resist shaking. Lucy Jones collaborated with the Los Angeles Mayor's Office in 2014 to identify vulnerabilities and prepare the city for the inevitable. Building codes for older structures can be changed to require retrofitting so that they would withstand seismic activity. Some cities have initiated programs to strengthen or demolish buildings that are at risk of collapsing during an earthquake. The second defence involves using land selectively to decrease the impact of hazardous events. The power, communication and internet systems must be strengthened and backup systems should be in place to ensure communication isn't entirely cut off. However, implementing these plans is challenging as they require billions of dollars and several decades. Homeowners can take individual measures such as retrofitting their properties and installing fire extinguishers to better prepare for a severe earthquake. Holding shakeout drills in schools, businesses and residential areas is also important. It's crucial to not believe in earthquake myths and live in constant fear. Geology reports have confirmed that California will not break off from the US and slide into the sea when the big one hits, as depicted in sensationalized versions of popular fiction. Now, imagine you're in the middle of an earthquake. The ground beneath your feet is shaking and everything around you is moving violently. What do you do to ensure your safety? One thing is for sure, you can't rely on anyone else to protect you. You need to take matters into your own hands and quickly find a safe space. 
If you're indoors, crawl under a sturdy table or other furniture to shield yourself from falling debris. Don't move around or you risk getting hurt by broken glass or other objects flying around. The ground can throw you off balance, causing you to fall and suffer injuries. In case of a severe earthquake, emergency responders may take longer to reach you due to road closures or other obstacles. That's why it's crucial to have a plan in place before disaster strikes. Identify the safest spots in your home and practice dropping, covering and holding on with your household members. Keep water and snacks stocked up in every room and be prepared to evacuate if necessary. There's no telling when the big one will hit, but one thing is for sure, California has experienced enough earthquakes to know that they need to be prepared. The San Andreas fault line is a ticking time bomb and it's only a matter of time before it ruptures and triggers a lethal earthquake. Will it be as catastrophic as the experts predict, or are they overestimating the impact? Share your thoughts in the comments below.